This is People and Event, and I am Glory Agbo. On this edition of the program, we take a look at the Holy Week and its significance as Christians globally celebrate Easter. We take you into the world of icons in the entertainment industry, especially art. It's an art exhibition like no other. We also bid farewell to a woman whose good virtue will linger on for a long time. It's an interesting package, I tell you. So don't go anywhere. I will be right back with the full gist. The age long tradition of placing beautiful ornaments and palm fronds on the ground in reverence of the Messiah as he rides through has been maintained in the Christian faith as it is part of the activities marking the Holy Week, which precedes Easter celebration. Now, Omenka Amarachuku takes a look at the significance and importance of this week to Christians. Palm Sunday is the first day of the Holy Week and a Sunday before Easter. The day recalls the story in the Christian scripture on the entry into Jerusalem, greeted by people waving palm branches. was mindful of the purpose for which he came. It was for him to die, to take our place, and to take away our sins and burdens and diseases. And uh, he humbled himself. He came in humility. He came with the passion to do the will and fulfill the purpose of the Father. He never was carried away by the praise of men or the songs of praises of the multitude. He remained faithful to the Father. Even when it meant suffering and death, he went through all. And so I believe that the Lord is asking us to be able to understand his will and purpose and to key into what he wants to do in our lives and in the lives of our nation. Riding on a court and that signifies that he is uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That day he proclaimed that he is King. And as he was moving into Jerusalem on a court, people, his disciples, the Bible recorded that they were shouting Hosanna with palms in their hands, throwing it, and the cot that Jesus Christ was riding on was moving on that. Now, the implication is that Jesus Christ has triumphed over challenges of life. Jesus Christ has triumphed over challenges of men. And because we are Christians, 
we are moving in that same power and that same glory. Reading on a chariot, he could have ridden on a horse. And that was the picture the Jews had for the Messiah. The Messiah they were expecting was someone who was coming to conquer. But here is the, that Messiah coming in humility, riding not on a horse, but on a donkey. So it is revealing humility to the cross. The service of Palm Sunday includes a reading of the Passion, the story of the suffering and crucifixion, commemorates the crucifixion of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, which proceeds Easter Sunday. In some Christian denominations, the Passion of Christ is demonstrated through the ritual of station of the cross. <laughs> Many Christians, Good Friday provides an opportunity for sober reflection on the suffering and death of Jesus Christ for the redemption of mankind. Let's see what this next report has for us. Expression 2.0, the highly anticipated event where the air is buzzed with excitement. As guests filter in, they are greeted by the vibrant works of Chief Kingsley Okafo and Ojemekele Igodalo, setting the stage for an unforgettable evening, celebrating fusion of artistry and camaraderie. This is one of the best awards I've got. Well, this has been rotten. The essence behind the icon of Creative Arts Award pulses its significance, echoing the urgent call to recognize and support the patrons and collectors who drive the engine of the creative industry. It is not just about honoring individual talents, it's about acknowledging the vital role that passionate supporters play in shaping the artistic landscape. out for exhibitions like this intrigues me. It gives me like a charge because after spending times and hours in the studio and I come out to see other artists works, I'm not just seeing an another artist but seeing other art enthusiasts come around to appreciate what we've been doing in the studio actually serves like a fuel to our vehicle you know that propels us to wanting to do more because we, we, we do these creative processes, not just for ourselves alone, but for the audiences out there. As Chief Okafo and Mr. Igodalo's masterpiece adorns the walls, guests pause to reflect on the deeper meaning behind them. It's a rallying cry for unity and appreciation, a testament to the collaborative spirit that defines the art world. Over the years, I've practiced art for over over 25 years and um, what I try to do at this point in time is to bring harmony uh, through uh, creating a unifying force between the diverse cultures of Nigeria you know where there's disunity there can be progress and after the elections there'll be a lot of dichotomy and all of that so we're trying to relate all the cultures and bring them together in a symmetry in harmony by depicting the different cultures, diverse cultures of Nigeria in the north, in the south, in the east, and the west. So if you look at my works here, they have that connecting force. Amidst the glitz and glamour, there's a palpable sense of purpose. Chief Okafo and Mr. Godalo's collaboration serves as a powerful reminder of the collective strength of the creative community. Through their partnership, they shine a spotlight on the unsung heroes 
who fuel the flames of artistic expression. The artist has been there for a very long time and uh, he knows what it takes to produce good artworks. The works are fine, well framed, and then with all the qualities expected from every art collector. So as guests mingle and marvel at the stunning artworks on display, they do so with a new profound appreciation for the icon of Creative Arts Award. They capture the different the diverse cultures of the country in, in artistic forms. I've seen artworks from Mr. Kri, I've seen my own tribe, the Anang uh, arts uh, expression, I've seen um, arts expression in Igbo culture, in very different culture, Hausa culture, Fulani, uh, Yoruba culture, and these are the things I try to promote in the, in the, the, promote, uh, in, in the cultural industries ventures that I'm into. When I entered here, you can see the beautiful artwork, and you can see the great work he has put to this, especially this one, this gossip. He said it's a CC Eco. He's talking about women that gossip and all that. From the elegant strokes of a paintbrush to the intricate layers of emotions captured on canvas, Expression 2.0 is more than just an art exhibition, it's a celebration of the human spirit. Time now to pause for some messages. People and events will be right back. Welcome back. It is a common saying that a mother's love is the purest form of love on earth, which makes it difficult to say goodbye at their transition, no matter how long to leave. This explains the mixed feelings of children and family members, including the former First Lady of Nigeria, 
Dame Patience Jonathan as they celebrate the legacies of the late Madame Matilda Ibisiki. Robinson Deretere witnessed the final joining at her hometown in Okrika River State. The beautiful town of Okrika in River State recently came alive as family members, friends, as well as other well wishers paid their last respect at the funeral in honor of late Madame Matilda Itelima Ibisiki. <laughs> Former First Lady of Nigeria, Dame Patience Goodluck Jonathan, was among dignitaries who extolled the qualities of the late matriarch. hope, a God-fearing and hard-working woman. She was a good mother and grandmother. She was selfless, loving, amiable, kind, and warm-hearted. The officiating minister, Anglican Communion, in his sermon, enjoined everyone to be humble and submit to God as a mortal being who must taste death. He said, late Madame Matilda was a devout Christian who served God with all humility and apt on charity, which the late Matilda was known for. And Paul is making us to understand when the trumpets are sounded, the voice of the archangels will be heard. Those that slept in the Lord will rise first to meet Jesus in the air. Those that live for Christ those that are prepared, like the virgins, also will rise, will take the jingle of an eye to meet Jesus in the air. While others, the gravitational force of sin, will pull them down. Late Matilda Ibiseke was a businesswoman who made impact in the real estate and catering services. She died at the age of 94, leaving behind five children, grandchildren, adopted children and a host of other relations. <laughs> Family members and friends described late Matilda as a woman of exemplary lifestyle who impacted those that were opportuned to meet her. She's a mom to the whole village, to the whole community. Uh, she is such a person that uh, anyone who comes around her, she likes to feed everybody. Sometimes we wonder where the money goes. Come to find out she feeds everybody. She um, she's the kind of mother that is you know, that would share whatever she has with anyone. My mom is selfless. She's loving. She's the kind of mom that she gives to all around her. Everybody's a child. Nobody can go wanting around her. My mom is the kind of person that when she sees someone that is not doing anything, she will ask you, what do you want to do? Why not go and learn trading? She will pay. She took good care of me. I stayed with her since I was in primary four. She made sure. Everything I do is good. She has been, 
She has been a mother to all, a mother to me. I even the bond we have for ourselves, it's it's something I can't even explain. If you are my friend and I've not told you about my grandmother, I don't think we are friends. The remains of late Matilda was thereafter taken to a private residence for interment. <laughs> From Okrika, I am Robinson Teratayde. May your soul rest on. That's where we draw the curtain on this episode of People and Events. Thank you for your time. I am Glory Agon. Stay blessed.